time with my club and my family as well. Yeah, and what are the plans for 2024? Are you spending extra time with your family, but could you do a U-turn? Could you do a Stephen Cluxton? I, I don't think so. Uh, I couldn't be persuaded to go out into that uh, that winter cold, I don't think. <laughs> but uh, no, I'll, I'll be involved with uh, the with team in, in some format next year, and uh, I look forward to a different challenge, uh, maybe on the sideline rather than on the, on the field of play. And you know, all year, Neil, we talk about teams and the collective. Like, how important is it for the likes of tonight that we are honouring individual players? It's very important. It's huge. You know, these players put in such an effort. It's, you know, Herculean at times, really. And for them to come here with their families and enjoy it and be supported by the people who have helped them get to this level, uh, it's just, a, it's an incredible night. And the awards will be you know, such a big, big part of these, these young people's lives. Of course, and like they'd be so proud. It's great for them to able mix and mingle, having supported these players all year. It is, and you know, so many of the families here who are supporting the players will have such similar stories and they'll be able to relate to each other in, uh, in, a, in a very, very nice way. So it makes for a brilliant night, superb uh, awards for these people to be uh, to be celebrated tonight and that's what it's about celebration and these these yep. worthy award winners will just love it now it's not just about the awards the glitz and the glam is very important too you're looking very glam yourself tonight who do you think is going to up the style stakes tonight with the hurlers well, I, I caught a peek of Connor Whelan arriving in a beautiful suede maroon jacket, yeah. uh, and that certainly of has caught the eye. Of course, he's a goey man. Look, Neil, <laughs> we'll be back to you again shortly, but what a fantastic evening in store. We'll bring you all the buzz and the excitement from all around the venue, including out on the red carpet with our reporter for the evening, Aaron Kernan. Excited to be joined by Kerry Legend, Mark O'Shea, at the RDS reception here. Before we get started with our chat and fine O'Shea tradition, can you just give us an insight into where we got the fresh treads for tonight's event, Mark? Yeah, our, I, I, my uncle Paddy, he said high standards, God be good to him, but uh, I used to be taken care of during the year by the great Jim McArdle, uh, 15 Kings, but this is, um, when we were getting our suits before the final, we always knew we were going to Sean Hussey's when we were in Chile. Fantastic football man, Sean Hussey, and it was it was exciting because you knew if you were going to Sean Hussey that you were in an honour point, which was a great thing. But uh, he always took care of us, and uh, so this is uh, Sean Hussey's uh, men's virtually uh, great football man. So we have to give him a plug. Fair play, fair play. Just in terms of tonight, um, Mark, obviously you have three all stars yourself, um, the O'Shea family have a, a litany of All-Stars, but just for yourself, the ultimate is to win the All-Ireland, to pick up an All-Ireland medal, but where does an All-Star sit in your own household and for you personally? Oh yeah, the, the All-Star is huge because uh, like growing up, watching my uncle party and even, you know, the, the piano over the piano was the All-Stars and like just to hold the All-Star was something that I always wanted to do and I suppose the unique thing about that was he had five of the same All-Stars they kind of changed them up as years went on and they were different but they're still unique and like to win an all-star is just the ultimate i think that's when we you know you go up to win all ireland to, to play with your inter-county team and i suppose it's it's a huge honor and not just for me but for i suppose the, my mentors growing up in the gale trip it's no different to yourself or to anybody else but, you know growing up it's the people who trained you all the way up and they're the people i suppose you think of when you when you win accolades like that yeah, and to be fair, a lot of people, they all put it down to the, it's all about the team and that there. But for me, I was unfortunate enough. I never won one, um, and I have no problem saying that you would have loved to have won one. But it is, it's a hugely prestigious night, and it's massive for the players themselves and their families. And like you say, for you to still be able to recognise the people who helped coach you all along, um, I think that's what makes the awards and the GA in particular uh, so special. It is, and, and I think as years have gone on, it's been more family inclusive. You know, when, back in the day when we were playing, it was just you'd rock on to the All Stars. There was no parents or nothing. Now you, you see the players coming in with their parents and their family, and I think it's a lovely night for everyone to to cherish, I suppose, and, uh, and savor these memories. Perfect. Well, from all of us down here, back to you, Jer, and thanks for your thoughts, Mark. Ian Thuck, our father, Aaron. Well, as you probably get the sense, it takes a lot behind the scenes to make this event what it is. We're joined now by GA Director of Communications, Alan Milton. Alan, you're so welcome. Good Chair. Now, it's an event, I suppose, everybody knows about and knows what in a big of event, how much work it takes. But where did the idea come about? Well, the All-Stars has been in existence since 1971 and 
people like Mick Dunn and his peers were very, very innovative people. And I suppose the idea came from American sport uh, that we have the best games in the world, but you really needed to have a prestigious event such as the one that we're going to have here tonight to award excellence and recognise excellence. And I think this game has definitely stood the test of time. It's as relevant now as it ever was. And it's a fantastic opportunity for players who are normally in competition with each other on the field of play to get to acknowledge each other and to mix and mingle because don't we all know that come January and February, uh, it'd be very different when they meet <laughs> next when they cross Definitely. the white line. So, yeah, I think it's really important that every sport has an acknowledgement or um, has an award scheme. But I, I think hand on heart that this must be the most prestigious one in our sport and we're, we're very, very pleased that everyone yeah. buys into it and it's a fantastic collaboration with, with the GPA as well. Oh, absolutely. And let's just talk about the selection process. Like, how are the teams and the players of the year picked? Well, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> I won't tell anyone, I swear. Uh, yeah, I, I had the good privilege to serve as a selector for the best part of a decade when I was a journalist and then I crossed over to the void. Um, so what happens in advance of the nominations meetings, there's a representation uh, from all of the media organisations across the island, both digital, broadcast and print, and they submit their nominations and they're, they're tallied and there's quite a robust debate. And then we move on to meeting number two, which took place last Wednesday. And again, you're uh, encouraged to submit your nominations for the final 15 and there can be skin and hair flying on occasion, but I, I have was just to going to say, you said robust debate. I yes. liked that wording. So basically, <laughs> any rows, we're all friends here. We won't tell anyone. Yeah, well, the journalists go to great, great lengths in their research and in their analysis. So they come prepared, they come armed, and they see more games than anybody. And because they're physically at the games, yeah. cheek by gel with the games and the players, it's not watching it on TV. So they come with uh, some very passionate views. Uh, I, I have to acknowledge the journalists in the role because it is their scheme, they founded it. We obviously co-sponsored with the GPA and in association with PwC, with the journalists playing an integral part in it. And I think it's that buy-in from across the wider GA family that really gives the whole scheme a really, really important and intrinsic part of the wider GA family uh, and the stable. And uh, it's a fantastic end every year. Brilliant, Alan, thanks so much for joining us. I know you're a busy man, so we'll let you go now and enjoy yourself and have a fantastic night. Well, as you all know, we're here this evening to honour, as Alan said, outstanding performances from players throughout the year. The PwC GAA GPA All-Stars Hurling Team of the Year was announced yesterday. But before we chat about the winners, let's take a recap on another brilliant competition. And a goal opportunity for Tim, and it's taken by Jake Morris. Goal chance, Connor Cahalan. The sides are level again, nine times in a home dinner of a game.
Bradley also achieving four in a row. Neil, the memories, they're all coming flooding back there. What a season. Obviously, the hurling team was announced yesterday. And let's start with the goalkeeper, Omar Fee. He has his All-Star Award to go with his save of the season. Or honestly, could it be one of the best saves in the history of hurling? It's certainly the best save that I've ever witnessed. Um, you know, there on the day, it was simply remarkable. Whenever Peter Duggan connected perfectly, uh, with that volley shot. And it was outrageous, it, really. It was incredible. And he got a touch and pushed it onto the bar, and it didn't even go over the bar. Of course, it came back out, and Kilkenny cleared the ball to safety. But Owen, Owen's not only the, the goalkeeper of 2023, he's the goalkeeper of his generation, in my opinion. And let's go to the full back line now. Two more Kilkenny players, Hugh Lawler, Mikey Butler, and of course, you have uh, Dan Morrissey. But like, I don't think people will have many complaints about that decision. No, I don't think so. I think the only names you, you might hear mentioned are, are, are that of, of Barry Nash or Paddy Burke, you know, who would have been pushing in that direction. But, I, I mean, like, Hugh Lawler has taken that number three shirt for Kilkenny and driven it to a, probably an all-time height. He's been a colossus in the age of the square. Mikey Butler, you know, he's yeah. just so consistent. And even the job he, he did again on Tony Kelly this year. Oh, Quite remarkable. unbelievable. And even Aaron Glam. But now we have a hurler coming to see us. Davy Fitzgerald from Clare. You're so welcome to this show. How are you doing? David, you, David. Um, so obviously, what did you make of the midfield decision yesterday? Did you feel unlucky to miss out? To be honest, no. I um, wasn't expecting anything this year. I thought Will and Dara both had exceptional years, even Will had a great year at midfield and then obviously two great games at six in the in the final so no um, and it was great to see obviously john from clear i'm biased getting in at six <laughs> we might get another um two years hopefully out of him at least but we'll wait and see and look what an occasion it is how special is it for you to be here tonight uh neil can obviously relate but it's great to um get to meet different players that you're normally competing against getting to see what they're like off the pitch and just yeah, getting a view on their personal life and their perspective on the game and stuff. Brilliant. David, thank you so much. I know it's a busy night and thank you for taking yeah, time no out to come Thanks. and Thanks visit David. us and enjoy tonight. You too. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers, David. See you later. Look at Neil. He was saying it there. He was unlucky to miss out, really, wasn't he? Uh, more than unlucky, in my opinion. I really feel like he was uh, he was one of our all-stars this year. And yeah. just because of how maybe Limerick had to change their team around uh, to facilitate the, the, the miss of their captain, David yeah, Hannan, uh, it cost David uh, an all-star this year. But he's right. They've lost one at midfield, uh, but Clare have gained one at centre back. I know, and we go to the half back line. Like John Conan at number six, like honestly, best man at his brother's wedding. He leaves to go help Clare beat Limerick. Like he deserved an all star. He did, and his performances as well. You know, John's, John's a great lad. He's, he's solid there, huge part of his club in Clon Lara. One of the very few people who has now got an all star in forwards and in the yeah. back line as well. Uh, so, look. Nobody in, in the hurling community would begrudge John Coleman no. as all-star, I don't think. And then you have to mention the two hurling, or hurler of the year nominees, Jermot Burns and Kyle Hayes. Like, they are consistently brilliant, Neil. K Kyle is, is simply one of the most powerful hurlers that the game has ever produced. He's phenomenal to watch when he has that ball in hand. And then on the other side of the field from himself, you've got Jermot Burns, who is probably one of the best strikers of a ball we've ever seen. And I felt that especially in the semi-final against Galway, when Galway were kind of in the ascendancy. Jeremy Burns, he, he started the fight back for Limerick. And they you had to remind him. me, didn't you, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's move to the half-forward line, and we have to talk about TJ Reid, his seventh All-Star. Like, you played in his position. Like, how do you rate him amongst the greats, Neil? He's the best player that I've ever seen play the game. Uh, a seventh All-Star, quite remarkable. It's just his consistency. TJ does not put in 5 out of 10 performances. It's always 7, 8, 9, 10 out of 10. Um, and even in the games in the round robin, you know, whenever we played them in Belfast, TJ was a cut above uh, the rest of his compatriots that day. And, you know, even in the All-Ireland final, we've seen him back defending in his own full back line on a couple yeah. of occasions too. And look, he's, he's a player that we'll be looking back on in 10 and 20 and 30 years' time and just rem and how remarkable he was. Absolutely. And like 36, but the oldest winner of an All-Star in 40 years. He's only a baby. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe in four years we'll see yeah. TJ back here. I don't know. Uh, maybe his, his wife and his, his young child might have something to they say about that. They might do. Now, we have to mention Shane O'Donnell as well. And look at it proven. You don't need a league performance. 
No, he, he, Shane has been incredible over the last two seasons, really. Uh, he's probably the best player to watch uh, in terms of ball in hand. He's so exciting. He has that, you know, that fact that the DJ used to have, that the crowd stands up when Shane O'Donnell gets the ball in his hand because we expect big things. He's so direct. Yeah. Uh, great lad to match as well. Good fun. And, you know, he, he's a really worthy winner. Speaking of Clare, Tony Kelly, was he unlucky to miss out? I don't think so, to be honest, this year. Yeah. You know, I know he was electric in the quarterfinal against Dublin with his three kind of mirror image goals of each other. But he was quiet again uh, under the, the stewardship of, of, of Mr. Butler. But look, Tony is obviously one of our prized possessions in hurling and I don't think he'd be... Uh, he begrudge any no. of our winners tonight. And just to talk about the forwards, finally, Connor Whelan from Galway. Well deserved, if I do say so myself, as a Galway woman. He's Connor Whelan is a one man inside forward line, yeah. and that's how Galway played him. Uh, he can win ball high, he can win ball low, he takes you on at every opportunity. Some of the scores that he took from almost corner flag positions this year were outrageous. And, you know, he's here with his maroon uh, suede blazer on. A man with confidence, clearly, as well. <laughs> Definitely. Now, we have to mention Aaron Galan. What did you make of his performance this year? I, I, I thought that he has now matured into the all-round forward, uh, the best in the country, in my opinion. He's so physical. He's so fast. He plays with such smarts. You know, he's seen that the goal he scored against Galway, where he sat in behind uh, Dahi Burke, played his hurl, caught the ball to perfection, and, and slotted home to the net. And that was a big, big score yeah. in, the, in the whole championship. Um, so, uh, look, Aaron is every fullback's worst nightmare. Absolutely. And actually, funny you say it, we're going to hear from him right now. I'm delighted now to be joined by Derry midfielder Brandon Rogers. Um, Brandon. You're in lane for your first ever All-Star. You're also in the running for the Player of the Year. Um, just in terms of yourself personally, for you, your family and the Slot Neil Club, what does it mean for you to be here, to be nominated on such a prestigious night in the GAA? That's, that's phenomenal, you know, I never would have seen myself being in this position, but yeah, it's, it is a real privilege to be here and it, it is an honour to represent my family and, you know, the, you know trying to emulate what Christy had done last year and things like that. It is brilliant and it definitely won the saver. And in terms of yourself, to be fair, like you're mirroring what Derry are, a model of consistency. You've done your back-to-back -back, uh, Ulster Championships. You've been a star man in terms of whether full-back or midfield. You have a new management in for next year. Um, what way do you see the 2024 season going? I'm sure it's something that you're looking forward to, a fresh start for everyone. Yeah, I suppose the consistency is also making a baseline of where we want to be. And yeah, look, with, it, with the new management, it comes in fresh and with a lot of new ideas and a different perspective on, on how the game should be played. So it would be very exciting to see what they can build on from the last couple of years and you know, maybe try and take us that step further. Um, obviously, Mickey and Gavin with that pedigree and one in all Ireland. So yeah, hopefully they can take us that extra step. And it is really exciting, um, even off the back of those last couple of years that we've had a bit of success. This, this has a little bit more of a centre for us and, and we're really, really looking forward to it. Thank you very much for your time, Brendan. Well, that was obviously Aaron Kernan and not Aaron Galan, but two legends, and there you have it, live TV. Well, next we move our attention to football. Before we delve into who we think might make the team of the year, let's have a look back on the 2023 Sam Maguire competition. Mikey Parston, American born and bred, drives it in, and New York are heading for the Connacht Football Semi Final. Blocked down on the follow up and scored, Dodie Smith. Connor McCluskey with his first ever championship goal. to Bugler, here comes the shot!
fabulous pass on the goal scored by Matthew Tierney. Brilliant stuff. Now, Mark O'Shea joins us. Mark, you're very welcome here this evening. You, I don't John. know, a bit of mixed emotions for you watching that back. Yeah, certainly so. Um, I was watching the clips of, say, when Kerry were three points up and the double came back up the yeah. field and got a goal, and that happened twice. And when you're three points up and the opposition come back and they level it, you know, it's it's really is heartbreaking, and that's the momentum changer then that you know teams bring in, and, and especially when it's Dublin and yeah. you're going down the stretch because these these players have a memory bank that they can call upon. I think you know, and it's 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 certainly something I think that really stood to them going down the stretch. That experience, oh, uh, particularly the older players, and it stood to them going down, and and I think they were worthy winners in the end. And now it is a nervous night for the footballers, of course. They don't know who's going to win the All-Stars tonight, but that's why you're here, because yeah. you're going to tell us <laughs> who's going to win. But let's get straight into it. Like goalkeeper, we've Stephen Cluxton, Rory Began, and Shane Ryan. Who's going to win that one? Three outstanding goalkeepers, and even like Rory Began, we saw him last weekend and the ability that he has. I know, for to, saves and oh, scores. Sc saves, scores, to be able to, to kick the ball off the ground with a, a short run-up. Uh, and like the 65-yard the kick he kicked. But anyway, I think it does come down to two players. Mm. I think it comes down to Stephen Cluxon and Shane Ryan. Cluxon's All-Ireland final performance alone could very well be worthy of, of a winner. But I just think the consistency of Shane Ryan throughout the, the championship, I thought he was outstanding. He was saves, excellent. Yeah, the saves he pulled off were phenomenal. His kickouts were excellent. That said, you know, you could you could look at it both ways. In the final, Cluxon was flawless. Yeah. I mean, he, he, every kick he took, he hit 100%. So you're going with Cluxon, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> every kick out he took, 100% success rate. You know, he, he wasn't taking freeze for the last few years. Now all of a sudden he's taking the freeze again and he had 100% success rate with that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we actually have Cluxton's teammate now, Colin Bascal, who's going to join us. Colin, Colin. Nice congrats. How are you Colin? Great to have you here. What is what is this like for you tonight? Yeah, it's new. Look, it's my first time uh, attending the All Stars, so it's brilliant. Uh, it's great, great to be here, um, and obviously it's great, you have to enjoy the success. So it's a brilliant year for us. So and look, it was a brilliant year for us. Like we have to talk about that game, the Dobbs against Mayo. Like you were central in that victory. Uh, I suppose it was in some ways, yeah. But look, it's a team game, and we have. Um, we have a lot of targets that we go after, so it was, it's not just about scoring. It's um, you know, it was a really good team performance as well. You know, so um, it's a privilege playing a great team like lads like Fitzy and Macker and and Klucko and and these lads are legends, really. So yeah. it's just a privilege to be part of it. And are you confident you'll get an award tonight? Uh, yeah, look, it'd be great to get it. Um, I'm not, yeah, it's just it's brilliant to be here amongst all these brilliant players from other counties and uh, just going to enjoy the evening if you get it great. If not, uh, there's always a couple of more years, I hope. Now, before we let you go, we were just talking about Stephen Cluxton. Is he going to come back for another year? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I can't speak for Stephen Cluxton, but look, yeah, obviously, we'd all love to have Stephen Cluxton playing with us next year, yeah. 
But look at Colin, thank you so much for joining us and enjoy your night and hopefully you get that award. Cheers, thanks. A great player, Mark. Super player. Uh, I always found the toughest players to mark were the players that went straight at you and got the, won the ball and Colin Baskell can win his own ball and he can take you on straight away. Yeah. Um, and he, he was phenomenal this year. He was a player who wasn't getting a look in yeah. under Jim Gavin and all of a sudden Desi comes on board and he is getting a look in and by God did he take his opportunity this year. He really did. He really and, he, did. and you know, I, I'd imagine Desi is a man, if you get the jersey, show us what you can do. Colin Baskell was outstanding all year and, and one of the main reasons I think Dublin got over the line because you always knew the cons and the Paul Mannions and the Kieran Kilkenny's were going to stand up. If you have an extra player coming in there like Colin Baskell, all of a sudden you have five or six players that you have to try and keep an eye on. Well, look, we were talking about Cole Keeper before Colin came in, so let's go back to the full back line. And who were your guaranteed winners there, Mark? I was, I was up the north um, and I, uh, at the Monaghan Derry match, and I have to say I was very impressed with Conor McCluskey. The energy that he had coming out of defence, I think he kicked a goal actually against Monaghan in, the, in their opening round against them. Uh, phenomenal player, brings huge energy. He was a player who, in a minor game, conceded, I think it was a three or four goals to David Clifford in a minor All-Ireland final. And to be able to come back from that and be one of the main players for Derry, outstanding, huge Neil, consistency Neil, what do you reckon? Throughout. Feel free to chip in. Yeah, I think, I think now Connor is he's got electric pace and he, has, he gives a buzz to the crowd whenever he comes in possession because that's how Derry play now. They build yeah. from the back and they run it out. But uh, I remember watching that game you're referring to when David Clifford took him apart, you know. Yeah. But he was he was 17 at the time. Yeah, I that's think. it, that's it. And his development's been unbelievable. Then, yeah. uh, so, you know, and look, even when you see him, he's still small in stature. And if he's standing beside maybe Mick Fitzsimons or somebody yeah. accepting an all-star here tonight, he looks yeah. small, but he has the heart of a lion. And before we move on, like Mick Fitzsimons, like, oh, is yeah. he the unsung hero, really, for the dogs? Oh, look, I mean, going down through the years, if you look at, say, Dublin, Mick Fitzsimons was always the go-to man to do the man-marking job. Now, and what a job he did on Unbelievable Clifford. job, unbelievable job. And he's coming now towards the tail end of his career, and yet he is still that man who is the, 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 taking that role as the man marker. And, like, I mean, in the drawn game in 2019, you know, I think it was Johnny Cooper that picked up David Clifford. They got their homework right in the replay, and Mick Fitzsimons detailed David Clifford, and he detailed him this year again in the final. Now, Brilliant. obviously, David Clifford was very much instrumental as well, but John, or Mick Fitzsimons had a, had a huge role to play, and he's, I think he's nailed on for a cornerback all-star and I'd have Jason Foley from Kerry in there as well to complete the full back line and then what about the half back line is this where opinions are most divided do you think I think so it's it's very hard to predict you know what way the all-star committee are thinking but James McCarthy has to be a shoe in you know you could play him anywhere from five to nine you know uh, you go back to the again I go back to the 2019 final when Tommy Walsh was playing and he was inside in the full back line marking Tommy Walsh so he's nailed on. Great year for Conor McCarthy too. Conor McCarthy and like to make that move from the forwards back to the back line and the way he was able to tear up the field. I think he's more natural like with his back to the goal and, and tearing up the field. I also think, you know, and, and I think when you're talking on that, Carl O'Connell then, a normal wing back, he was pushed on up a bit. So don't be surprised if two Monaghan players get all but stars there's, tonight. There's only three spots though, Mark. Yeah, well, maybe Carl could possibly get a half-forward spot. You wouldn't know, you but wouldn't know. if I'm picking my half-back line, I'd say James McCarthy, Gareth McKinless from, from Derry, again, outstanding. He's able to drift back when, when needs to and mind the full-back line and also get forward. And I'd say Conor McCarthy in the wing. Now, midfield. Like, is it hard to look past Brian Fenton and Brendan Rodgers? Well, this is it. I, I think this is probably... The hardest all-star team to pick in years, but probably the easiest midfield to pick. Yeah, yeah. And I would say that Brian Fenton and Brendan Rodgers, the two of them are in line for Footballer of the Year. So, look, I think it's a given that they're going to be eight and nine. And, like, with Brian what Fenton... What about James McCarthy, though? Do you think he yeah, should Yeah, but, I mean, I suppose with all-star teams, there is that bit of flexibility if you play in a position during the course of the year. And James McCarthy has played in the half-back line during the course of the year and the committee will, will, will know that. So that's so an extra man. Yeah, it is. And, and I think, like, you know, watching Fenton throughout the course of the year, Dublin were outstanding in the Leinster final against Louth. They kicked five goals. But I think they were very much in third gear. But Fenton really came into his own yeah. from the quarter, semi-final, final. I mean, the semi-final, when, when Dublin needed a man to, to pop up, he kicked those two crucial scores uh, into the Hill 16. So uh, Brian Fenton was outstanding. Brendan Rodgers 
that uh, seamless transition from the full back line last year out to the middle of the field this year. Yeah. You know, what a footballer. And I mean, unbelievable. You know, when, when, when those two fellas are in the middle of the field, it's, they're hard to stop. It's just Absolutely. Done. Brandon, Brandon could very well receive a hurling award at some stage. He is that good <laughs> yeah. of a hurler. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that thought. Now, let's hear from another Kerry man. Delighted to be joined here by David Clifford. David, you're nominated for Player of the Year, hoping to win a fifth All-Star. Um, you have a, a big game coming up at the weekend, which might curtail your celebrations, but I'm sure it doesn't take away from the prestige and the honour of being at a function like this. Um, oh yeah, look, it's good. They're, they're always great, nice to be at. Um, it's just, I mean, say the same thing every year, but like, it's not obviously when you set up to, to, to achieve the start here. Uh, obviously the big prize is winning the All-Ireland. Um, so when you go to that, obviously it's, the year goes, goes down at this point. But look, it's, it's a nice bonus at the end of the year. Um, it's always nice when there's a big, there's a big carry gang up here. Um, so yeah, look, they're very prestigious honours to win. Um, and as I said, they're always great, nice to be involved in it. And in terms of yourself personally, your partner, the carry ones, do you find it's nice to get the opportunity to mix obviously with them because you're away with your club for so long and then also your opponents from other counties that obviously you don't get that opportunity to mix with during the year? 100%. Um, so it's just on, on the Kerry lads firstly. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's surprising. You probably don't get to see as much of each other in the off-season as you'd like to. So getting to meet them again is great. Um, and then the other counties, exactly. Like, like It's nice to... I suppose to be in a, in a bit more relaxed environment to actually have a chat with fellas and maybe get to know fellas a bit. Because um, I suppose in the matches it doesn't really do too much time for a uh, chat. Oh, that's perfect, David. Thanks very much. Great stuff. Now, Mark, let's talk half forward line. Who have you winning there? Um, I think number 10 it would be Paddy Clifford. Uh, the, oh, the, Mr. Dependable. Oh, like. yeah. And like, just look at the All Ireland final when, when Kerry were really under pressure. He popped up with those three incredible points, uh, points that were re really important for Kerry at the time to keep us in the game. And I thought he was just incredible and just the strength of him. It's very hard to dispossess him when he's on the ball. And I, I just felt that he was a real thorn on the Dublin side uh, throughout that game and throughout the year for Kerry. He was outstanding. Um, I'd have Paul Mannion. Oh, yeah, you know, man like of the match. Man of the the match. Honor, yeah, a phenomenal player. Um, and he really, you know, this year, came back into the Dublin set up along with Stephen Cluxon like getting two new players and like you know to finish off the year with, with uh, man of the match in the final doesn't get better than that um, I'd have Enda Smith now it might be a controversial one but throughout the year with Ross Common he was the one player who really stood up and I was actually at the, some of the games I was in Hyde Park and uh, he was just the consistency throughout the National League throughout the Championship Enda Smith was the go-to guy for yeah. Ross Common and uh, I suppose when three teams go through the... the so who's missing out there then? Oh, there's a Shadow lot of people Shea. missing out and that's that's the, the controversy of the All-Stars and people's opinions and everyone has a different opinion. So look, um, and I'm sure I think it's somebody now when we go off air and I'd say, you know, but look, I, I think those three were, were phenomenal. And what about Sean O'Shea? Uh, yeah, I, I just think he'd possibly lose out and you have to also remember... Um, Teams who win the final usually get five or six. If you don't win the final, yeah. you're not going to get the five. You, you might get four if you're very lucky. Um, so I think Shawnee, on this occasion, might just lose out. OK, what about the full forward line then? The full forward line, like Shane along McGuigan with the, with the midfield, is possibly the easiest because we just had him there a while ago. I think Colin Baskell is a shoe-in. David Clifford picks himself and Shane McGuigan picks himself. Yeah. Uh, watching Shane McGuigan and David Clifford go at it this year. It was like the, the All-Ireland last year with Shane Walsh and David Clifford. And of course, Two Shane old. was record scorer as well. What did he, was, he yeah. tipped Clifford by a point. That's right. And like, you know, the skills of this fella and like to see Mickey Hart now go in to Derry, it, it's going to be very interesting to see where they're at next year. But uh, the signs are, are really good above in Derry. The, Kerry were very lucky to beat them in the yeah. semi-final, only for the David Clifford point uh, towards the end of the match. So... Shane McGuigan fully deserved of his all-star David Clifford not an awful lot of dubs in there though Mark like well, who would feel unlucky maybe Cormac Costello yeah I would say uh, Cormac very unlucky possibly um, you know Kieran Kilkenny missed out starting in some of the games so he's probably unlucky as well but um, big impact off the bench though huge huge yeah. and when you have a pair of his experience coming off the bench um, it's, it's, it's unbelievable to, and as Dublin you saw I would say maybe finishing with, even with a stronger team that started 
but uh, I would I would go with those three: Baskell, David Clifford, and Shane McGregor. And look, we need to talk a little bit more about David Clifford. Like he may not have been totally happy with his performance in the All Ireland final, but like his CV and his performance throughout the championship oh, yeah. was but, exceptional. But even like I'll even take the All Ireland final performance. He was fouled for three or four scores that he put over the bar. He made the goal for Paul Ganey under the Hill 16. The the impact and the influence he had in the game was incredible. So, and he made two or three scores as well. No, of course he missed two or three that he'd usually score, and that's yeah. what everyone focuses on. So, from that point of view, he won't be happy. And obviously, he was captain of the team that lost the All Ireland, and what a year it would have been for him to win it. Uh, such was the difficult year that the, the family had. So yeah, from, like you have to remember. Yeah, so like look, a, a tough year for the Clifford's. Yeah, tough. And you know, I, I think uh, it would make their mom really proud mm -hmm. yeah. if David and Paddy won All Stars here tonight. Oh, amazing. Well, look, we've heard from a lot of footballers, but now let's hear from another hurler. We're joined now by Darrow Donovan and Ashley Thompson, um, and then obviously this has to be a Gucci suit, uh, if it's yourself, Dara. Uh, can you give us some insight into where you've got this outfit for tonight? I got a blow in Limerick Market Yard there last <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's not you. Um, Ashley, I believe you've done a, a wee bit of travelling, you're only back from somewhere recent. Yeah, well, I'm only tagging along like with the Limerick lads. Uh, it was their team holiday, so we're just back from Barbados. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. And in terms of a likes of tonight and mixing and uh, been in the company of players from other counties and back with your Limerick teammates, is this a part of the night that comes with suppose, being selected for this award that you really look forward to? Oh, yeah, look, it's, uh, at the end of the day, Aaron, it's about getting the, the top gong, like, you know what I mean? And winning the All-Ireland, I, I think everyone here would substitute an individual award for, for winning in All-Ireland, whether it be in the Lee McCarthy or the Sam McGuire. Um, so I think, look, it's nice to be here tonight, enjoy the company of other players. Six months' time, we'll be out on the field killing each other. So That's all part and parcel, but to both of you, thank you very much. Down there. All right. Cheers. Brilliant stuff. Now, Conor McCarthy from Monaghan joins us. Conor, what a night. Oh, unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, the last time I was in here, actually, I was doing exams for UCD. So Same as me, yeah. Bit different. <laughs> so it's a lot less intimidating spot tonight now than it was back then, but uh, unbelievable, unbelievable setup, and just looking forward to the night now. Well, what a night, and what a season it's been for you. Yeah, yeah, it has been. Looking back, it, pr it probably has been a great season. Uh, obviously, no silverware, but it's, it's definitely progress, you know and it's about building on that again next year, but you can look back and be satisfied that it was progress for us. Like. Definitely, and your family, it must be a very proud night for them. Have you many of them with you here tonight? I do, yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, table 72, so stay well away. <laughs> <laughs> just, Connor, can I just ask to say, you were always playing the forwards. How did you find the transition moving back to the half-back line? Like, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Really enjoyed it, really embraced it. Like, um, it was probably, it was put to me at the start of 2022 and uh, I played the full season in 2022 at, at wingback and that was a big learning curve yeah. to be honest because I'd played uh, most of my intercounty career in, in the forwards like and half forward and, and corner forward so it was a big, it was a big shift but I really embraced it like really embraced the defending side of it as well as, as well as yeah. the attacking side of it. Because I suppose the way the game has gone you probably were finding yourself tracking players getting back there and now it's, you've your back to the goal and you're going the other way so it must be a, a nice way to, to, <laughs> yeah, to play. Yeah, no it is, it definitely is. Um, a lot of the times when you're up there as you say your you're back's the goal and you maybe have to you have to beat your man twice in a sense when you get the ball yeah. you know uh, whereas at wing back you're kind of coming on and you're facing the goals yeah. and you can kind of eye your man up and take him on in that sense Absolutely, yeah. um, so that, that probably did uh, did suit me now to be honest with you for sure. brilliant well Connor, thank you so much for joining us and the very best of luck tonight we have Brian Fenton who's going to come in and join us now Perfect. so Connor, you might just give him the microphone yeah, when he comes in thanks that's, thanks, thanks, very thanks very much Brian you're br hey, Brian Brilliant to have you, you here, Brian. Hello, how are you? Thanks so much. Do I speak into this? You can okay. speak into it. You're doing very Brilliant. well. Thanks. <laughs> Look at it, Brian, like all-star, also for Footballer of the Year. How are you feeling? Yeah, great. I'm buzzing, to be honest. Uh, just came, just arrived. Had a quiet point with my dad there and some family and my girlfriend, Katie. So uh, just landed into this glitz and glamour. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, we're obviously used to the convention centre, but this place looks absolutely spectacular tonight. And... Uh, yeah, just excited and it's amazing and to be back again. are you confident about tonight? How do you see it going? Ah, no, I'm up against some fella called uh, David Clifford or something, <laughs> so never heard of him. Um, 
So uh, we'll see, we'll see. But look, like, who cares really? You know, from uh, you know, all, with respect, um, we've had an amazing year as a team with Dublin, and these nights are incredibly special. But uh, as Tomas, well, you know, or sorry, Mark, excuse me, <laughs> Jesus. As Mark if well knows, as Mark, as Mark, as Mark well knows, um, geez, don't worry, that's a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. That's a compliment to him. I'll be kicked out of family now. My dad's a carry man, so he'll kill me. Um, <laughs> But no, we've had a great year and these nights are just a little bit of glamour on top. You know? And look, could you be well used to them, but are they still so important to you? Ah, oh, for sure, yeah, uh, for sure, yeah. Um, they're lovely, you know, to get a individual recognition. Like I would have, when I was a kid, I would have walked around Crow Park from say the Hogan stand to the Cusick stand or whatever way we went in. And uh, you'd see like the team of the millennium on the walls or the all-star team of whatever on the walls. And you'd see these iconic names, the Jack O'Shea's, the Darrow Shays, you know, you see all of them. So uh, to kind of be in that mix and be in that conversation is just really, really special on an individual level. Oh, brilliant. I hope you have a great night and the very best of luck. I'll see you see all in the dance floor. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Mark will be the first one out, I know. <laughs> Brian, thank you Thanks so much and best of luck. Thanks. Look, at Neil, you haven't talked enough at all. <laughs> so we're going to go back to the hurling and hurler of the year. And you're going to tell me who's going to win it. Well, obviously we have three nominees. Yeah. Uh, we only have one forward. We have two wing backs and one forward. So I think the odds are. So we've are... Aaron Galland, Jeremy Burns, and Kyle Hayes. Yeah. It's a it's a tough one. But it, is, there... it is a tough one because I I think Aaron Galland will get the nod here tonight. If I was picking it personally, I think I might be aging just slightly in favour of Jeremy Burns because when the game was in the melting pot against Galway. It was that man, Jeremy Burns, who, who struck over two long-range frees, fall by one from play, to really turn the tide in, in uh, Limerick's favour. Again, when Kilkenny had them under the cosh in the final, yeah. Jeremy Burns just started to catch nearly every puck out that Owen Murphy landed down the field. And is he the so, highest scoring defender ever? He's ever. now the highest yeah. scoring defender ever. Uh, his striking's just, you know, like something out of this world, but he is the full package, it's not yeah. just about that. So would you go with Jeremy Burns? Uh, he would be my pick, to be honest. That may be controversial, but it would be. And Mark, what about you? What would your opinion be? Who would Sorry, you go with Jerry, for the I hurling? I didn't hear that last comment. So I'm, I'm He's plugging going with for Jeremy, Jeremy Burns. Burns and, and, but I think that Aaron Galan will probably get I, it. Well, obviously, it's always the forwards who really kind of shine. You know, um, I saw Jeremy Burns actually as I came in the door. And uh, they're just back from, from their Barbados trip. <laughs> and uh, uh, JP was obviously helping them out. But I thought myself Galan was incredible because he's, he's the go-to guy. He's the fellow that... Like for me, looking in, he was the fellow who stood up for me, you know. So yeah. I'd be going Aaron Gillan. Maybe, maybe I'm favouring the inside forward there, but uh, yeah. I'd go for. I'd be controversial. I go for Gillan. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we're going to bring Aaron Kernan in now. Aaron, great to have you off here with us. We missed you. <laughs> and we're going to talk about footballer of the year. And who are you going to go for? Uh, myself and, and Mark had a wee a convo about this here earlier on. Um, in fairness to the three boys, the, the one word that we had used is consistency. Um, yeah. And for a number of years, day in, day out, that's what they epitomise, is someone who's consistent, doing the simple things well all the time. Um, but for me, I think just throughout the whole year, whenever it comes to club and inter-county campaign, um, I think he just stood out that wee bit more uh, in terms of class and I probably think that David Clifford will end up picking it, uh, up, picking up an award for the second year in a row. Um, phenomenal what he's done for both his club, the length of his season, everything that he's had to go through yeah. and still to be able to perform the way he has is incredible. Um, but all three absolutely worthy candidates but um, for me that's who, who I would And we were speaking to. about it earlier like when you look back at the Munster final and 24 hours after his poor mum passed away like it takes a lot to perform the way they both did actually and to go through that um, it's fantastic. It just shows the strength of character yeah. of the Cliffords. I was actually in Kerry myself that weekend um, and there was a sombre mood even around Killarney itself once the news had broken but the word was straight away that they were going to play, they were going to do the mother proud, and to be fair, they did. They went out and did what they always did, put in an unbelievable performance. Yeah. So again, you can talk about player of the year in terms of ability, um, but ability, it takes much more to get to the level they get to, and he had an incredible year. Yeah, great point. Now, Mark, who's your footballer of the year? Yeah, like, uh, Aaron just mentioned the word consistency, and like, if you're looking at consistency throughout the year, Brendan Rodgers brought it to a new level. Yeah and especially the transition from full-back out to midfield, uh, an needy area, and working with Connor Glass, like that's, that's an incredible partnership there now. 
uh, really, you know, very hard to beat that partnership throughout the country. And Did they, he need to be in the All-Ireland final, though? Possibly, possibly, yeah. You know, um, we've seen the exceptions of the rule down through the years, players winning the, the award. But, like, yeah, it does help if you're in the All-Ireland final. Um, obviously, Brian Fenton and I, I, I keep on saying this, you know, when the time was most important, he really stepped up the few gears, and I said this already, Ger, uh, especially in the semi-final and the final, semi-final against Monaghan, you know, he really, he was the man going down the stretch. But for me, throughout the year, Aaron mentioned it already in terms of the club, but the county as well, like, I mean, you know, the, the, the level of consistency, the sheer brilliance, the, the, the moments where, you know, he saw that ball, uh, player ran inside, two Tyrone players about to convert yeah. him, and then I suppose he thought he was going to end up in the middle of the the, the prawn sandwiches, as Raheem would say, <laughs> in the middle of the Hogan stand, but he flicked the ball over his head, oh, it was and Terry went for a goal. It's, it's incredible, and I don't think anyone else in the country could do no. that other than David Clifford. So for me, not just on that, but David Clifford throughout the whole year, I think he deserves the Footballer of the Year. Neil. I think even, even just thinking of it on a, a kind of an overall picture, the attention that that man gets paid to him every time he yeah. takes the field is probably on a, on a different level than we've ever seen before. And yet, the consistency is still there. So, you know, I think everybody's in, in agreement. He's just a joy to watch. Like yeah, a lot of pressure all the time every time he goes out there you're right yeah. Neil and, and his own expectancy of himself seems sky high but I know I remember hearing Pat Gilroy say your most important player is your ball winning inside forward yeah. and he's doing the scoring and the ball winning which I think he's improved on this year actually again yeah. we used yeah. to have Gooch and Kieran Donaghy inside and Gooch would do the scoring Kieran would do the ball winning now you have a kind of a two in one in, in David Clifford he's as big as Donaghy and he's as as skillful as Gould, so we but try and hold on to, to him for to a few do more years. It in an era now where the space is so limited yeah. and as Neil said, where there's always two, three people in front of him, yeah. everything he does nearly has to stand out because he yeah. has so little to work with. Uh, again, if you're talking about bits of brilliance like Chrissy McCaig in the first half of the All-Ireland semi-final, he literally had his hand on his chest. Yeah. He couldn't have got any closer <laughs> and yet Clifford still got put the, the ball yeah. over the bar. Yeah. And I remember just sitting back and going, it's incredible. It looks simple because it's him and you expect it yeah. because it's him but no definitely just a phenomenal talent and for us as supporters or Gales to be here in a team whenever he's doing what he's doing it's just incredible to watch and look so it's Clifford all around but Aaron we have to mention your retirement how does that feel what are you going to do with all that free time yeah, I think it gets eaten up very quickly, so it does. There's a lot of people uh, don't be long looking to punch in the airs with you. But uh, yeah, for myself, um, this past week, um, it's been great uh, in terms of you do, you get messages from all over the country. And oh. I suppose it just makes whatever bit of sacrifice and that there uh, worthwhile for everything that, that you've done. Whenever you're playing, you just sort of you're in a bubble and you go from one game to the next, one year to the next. Um, but no, I'm, I'm happy with my decision. I think it's the right decision for me. Um, I'm more than happy with everything I've achieved. And in terms of whatever it is, a bit of coaching with underage and the club, we might get stuck into that. Um, but yeah, family and I suppose getting into the real world and maybe enjoying the likes of these uh, social nights is uh, probably that's something that I'm really, really looking forward to. Something that you do miss out on, in fairness, whenever you're yeah, well, you're playing congratulations so. and enjoy it all. And that's it from us. Thank you to Neil and Mark and, of course, our roving reporter, Aaron. We're off to enjoy ourselves. I hope you do too. The main show, of course, is on RTE at 7.30. Slonga Fall.